Welcome back to our channel. If you're familiar with the story of Noah and his three sons, you may have wondered about the identities of the three wives who survived the flood with Noah and his sons. In this video series, I will provide more details about the wives of Shem, Ham, and Japheth, with a particular focus on Shem's wife, who is considered the mother of the Semitic nations. Let's begin by exploring the first video of the series, titled, Matriarchs of Humanity. The wives who were present on Noah's Ark were part of the family that survived the Great Flood, a catastrophic event described in the biblical narrative found in the book of Genesis. Shem's wife, being a member of Noah's family, was chosen by God to survive the flood due to her righteousness and justice. Initially, we have Noah's wife, who was the mother of their three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Each of these sons also had their respective wives. While the Bible doesn't provide many details about these women, additional religious texts addressing this topic mention their existence and offer information about their names and other intriguing aspects of their lives. In Genesis, chapter 6, verse 18, God addresses Noah and instructs him to bring his wife, sons, and their wives into the ark, mentioning a total of eight people. The New Testament, specifically 1 Peter, chapter 3, verse 20, written in the late 1st century after Christ, confirms the presence of eight individuals on Noah's Ark. In the book of Tobit, only Noah's wife is mentioned, described as belonging to the same lineage as Noah. This reference can be found in Tobit, chapter 4, verse 12. During the time of Shem, in a nomadic society, women likely played a crucial role in family organization. As families moved in search of resources, Shem's wife could have been instrumental in setting up and dismantling tents, preparing food, and managing daily needs. Survival in this nomadic context depended on agriculture and animal husbandry, where Shem's wife might have been responsible for grain harvesting, food production, and animal care. Additionally, she may have held the responsibility of transmitting values, stories, and spiritual beliefs within the realm of family tradition. As a mother and companion, Shem's wife possibly played a fundamental role in educating the children and maintaining the family's religious beliefs, including the worship of Noah's God. Furthermore, she is described as a prophetess of the Lord, and over her more than 600 years of life, she would have made prophecies about her children and grandchildren in partnership with her husband, Shem. The Book of Jubilees, which was originally dated between 160 and 150 BCE but is now considered to be from the 7th century BCE, provides intriguing pieces of information. This book is considered canonical by the Ethiopian Orthodox Church and the Beta Israel, the Ethiopian Jews. It lists the names of Noah's son's wives, including Shem's wife, described as Setequetlpap according to Siberian oracles. Shem's wife is said to have enjoyed an incredibly long life spanning many centuries and made various prophecies for future generations. Genesis, chapter 10, verse 21, makes reference to Setequetlpap, Shem's wife, who had several sons and daughters with Shem. The children of Setequetlpap and Shem have specific names, such as Elon, the father of the Elamites, Asher, the father of the Assyrian people, Arphaxad, the father of the Chaldeans and Akkadians, Lud, the father of the Ludim, and Aram, the father of the Aramites. All of these individuals were children of Setequetlpap and Shem, who was a son of Noah. According to the Book of Jubilees, one of Shem's daughters, whose name is not mentioned, married one of Japheth's sons, specifically Madai. Their union resulted in the birth of many children, and their descendants became the Medes, Persians, and other Middle Eastern peoples. These peoples have a direct lineage from Shem's wife and are considered descendants of this union, present in countries such as Iraq, Syria, Saudi Arabia, the United Arab Emirates, Qatar, Bahrain, Jordan, and others in the region. 
The Jews, who are also Semitic, share a common heritage with this woman, as they trace their lineage back to Shem. They are primarily found in Israel but also have a presence worldwide. It is plausible to assume that Shem's wife had an exceptionally long life, considering she would have been born before the flood when people were said to live for notably long periods. Estimates suggest she could have lived between 600 and 800 years, similar to Shem's lifespan. The topic of longevity before the flood and the biblical figures who lived the longest is intriguing and could be the subject of a video on our channel. Feel free to share your thoughts or interest in the comments. It's important to note that different Christian traditions have different names for Shem's wife. The Book of Jubilees refers to her as Setequetlpap, while some Christian traditions know her as Nahalat Monarch. Islamic traditions and some Persian historians mention her as Shalib, stating that she was the granddaughter of Mehujal, a character from the Old Testament, mentioned in the book of Genesis being the son of Irit, the grandson of Enoch, and the great-grandson of Cain. Among all the different versions of names and information presented by later, traditions the oldest tradition is the one described in the book of Jubilees. A Jewish book the name of Shem's wife is mentioned as Setequetlpap, which is the earliest recorded name. There are speculations by scholars and enthusiasts about this matter, people dedicated to seeking and understanding the scriptures especially the book of Genesis in the Old Testament. Some theories suggest that the tomb of Shem and his wife could be located somewhere in Iraq, considering the presence of the Chaldeans, Semitic people in the region and ancient. Other speculations propose that the tomb could be in Syria, possibly near Damascus or even somewhere in Iran, hidden in the desert sands. The exact location of Shem and his wife's tomb remains a mystery and a subject of debate among those interested in these traditions and stories. Despite the scarcity of information about Shem's wife, it's possible to conjecture about the significant role she played in daily life, family sustenance, and the preservation of religious traditions by examining the historical and cultural context of Shem's time. We can understand how women were key players in building and maintaining society, contributing to the survival culture and spirituality of their communities. I hope everyone has enjoyed another documentary, another video exploring aspects of the Old Testament Bible, unless are discussed characters. Soon we will bring you part 2 where we will delve into the story of Ham's wife. I know you're already subscribed to our channel, so don't forget to leave a like and in the end screen we'll present another video from our channel that will surely pique your interest. Thank you for staying with us up to this point. See you soon.